In this video, you're gonna learn three powerful tips for navigating the in-between moments of worship at church. And if you've ever felt yourself scrambling and thinking, uh, what am I gonna say before this next song? Well, by the end of this video, you'll have a trio of specific strategies you can use in your next worship experience. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Tools, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you're going to get a dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. I'm Brady Shearer, joined by our special guest, Jake Goslin from Church Front. Jake, great to have you here. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself to Pro Church Nation? So great to be here, Brady. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, my name is Jake. I'm the creator of churchfront.com, an online resource that helps teach worship leaders how to lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. I kind of live in both of those worlds, leading theologically thoughtful worship gatherings for the church, for the local church, as well as utilizing the power of technology that we have today uh, in our worship gatherings. So yeah, I've been leading worship for just, just over 10 years now since high school wow. and mostly smaller to mid-sized church context. And I currently serve at a small church plant in Lakewood, Colorado. We, just, we launched just like nine months ago in January of 2018. So I'm just very familiar with the, the day-to-day uh, tasks, challenges, responsibilities uh, that we as worship leaders have to deal with you know, in a church and in organizing uh, the, the Sunday morning uh, worship gathering and, and everything that has to happen both before that service to make it possible and during that service. And one of those things is as we lead our worship gatherings is helping our congregation uh, just navigate through the service and and give them guidance during those in between the song moments. Um, so I'm really glad to be here today to to kind of jam on this topic with you because this is one that I'm super passionate about. Yeah, we don't talk too much about worship on Pro Church Tools generally because my worship leading days are behind me. My Telecaster mm-hmm. and my bass guitar are wrapped in their cases deep in the <laughs> cavity of my basement that no one wants to go near. Uh, but you were in town, mm-hmm. and I felt like there's no better time than to discuss worship. We talk a lot about hosting at church and announcements, you know, the before, the in-between, and that can happen within worship as well. So we've got three tips for Pro Church Nation, kind of three strategies that you can follow, things to say to navigate these in-between moments. Maybe you're more familiar with singing behind a mic. But when it comes to talking behind a mic, it's a little uncomfortable. Hopefully these strategies are going to help. Uh, Jake, do you want to take us away with the first one? Yeah. And, and I want to say too, I know there are worship leaders in Pro Church Nation. I, I was true. one of them. You know, I've been leading worship for a while, but I'm also the the media communications guy. So a lot of worship Classic. leaders have to wear both hats there. So if you're there as well, I totally, totally get you. So tip number one for what to say during those in-between moments is is the call to worship. It's usually at the beginning of a worship gathering. And as a worship leader, you know, what, what I like to do uh, is we have our opening song at the beginning of our service. And usually, you know, the congregation is still coming in there so that a church that shows up late, uh, unknowable universe, like everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We have our countdown, but folks are still coming in even five minutes after uh, the service time has started. And after that song, though, mostly everybody's in there. And that's when I like to to take a break before we sing our other two songs and say, hey, uh, welcome to church. Uh, and at this moment, we just want to really focus our attention on on why we're here in the first place this morning. One easy way to have a, a great call to worship at the beginning of your service is to just quote a, a scripture verse. And the book of Psalms has a lot of great verses that will help remind the congregation why they're there. Psalm 95 is a great example. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. And the main purpose is to, to help remind the congregation they're there to worship in a in a, a corporate experience. It's not a show, you know, as tempting as it can be for worship to be a very consumer-oriented experience. We want it to be a very participatory experience. And that's what the call to worship is really great for. And it's a really great thing or a great way to, you know, speak some some truth in the moments between songs. I remember listening to a, a Hillsong live album, Jake. I have no idea which one it was, but I know that Joel Houston was, was leading and maybe he was going into, you know, with everything or from the inside out, one of his, you know, classic anthems. 
And he said something like, look, from, from, from the front to the back, from the left to the right, no spectators. Engage. Focus your attention on God. And that single line, like, no spectators, has resonated with me, you know, since the decade that I first heard that. Because I feel like when we're in worship, it's very easy for us to kind of opt out, for us to think, you know, this isn't for me right now. There's so much going on that that's oh, stealing my focus. And just a simple call to your congregation to say, look, I know there are so many things in your mind right now. Let's dedicate these next 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Focus every ounce of attention you have on God. And and don't be a spectator. Engage. Jump in. And, and let's get involved. I, I love that. And then tip number two is song explanation. So there's a lot of great, well-written songs that are coming out of the, you know, worship industry machine. Maybe not some not so great songs, but there's a lot of great ones. We're introducing newer songs quite frequently today in contemporary worship. And when you put yourself in the congregation's shoes, you realize a lot of these lyrics that they're singing in on the screen may be kind of just flying past them. They don't even have time to really process what they're singing. Hopefully you're repeating the songs on a regular basis too. But as worship leaders, it's one of our responsibilities to help unpack those songs and explain some of the meaning. Like what theme of the gospel does this song hit on? Is it adoration? Is it confession? Is it thanksgiving? Uh, is it more of a sending song? Um, or what scriptural references does this song have that could really bring clarity to people? Because again, when people understand the why behind something, they're, they're more apt to want to participate and engage during the worship service. And then as worship leaders, song explanation is just another great way uh, to have some meaningful content to share in between songs. I remember, we're about the same age, Jake, so I don't know if this was the same for you, but in youth group, I remember one of the big songs for us was was John Mark McMillan's How He Loves. Mm-hmm. And there's a great story behind that about, you know, John tragically losing a friend of his and then out of that pain, penning the song. And I remember the first time that I that I heard that story, and I think that's actually probably a big contributing factor to that song becoming as widely acknowledged and sung as it was, because it wasn't just a song. It was a song that had a great story behind it. And when you learned that context, the song developed a greater level of meaning than it had before. And so that's why I love this second tip of just explaining the context or the story behind a song, because for some people, maybe we're not as musical, we're not as poetic by nature. You add a little bit of level of meaning, and suddenly it's that much more attainable and accessible for some of us. Final tip, and this one's this one's my tip, yep. Jake. So we're going back to high school Brady with an ovation acoustic slash electric guitar leading worship. It wasn't mine. I borrowed it from my youth pastor. My favorite tip for what to say in between songs, if you are going to say something, is to take a scripture verse that is directly tied to the lyrics of the song and introduce that scripture verse first before going into the song. So I have a couple of examples to explain what this might look like. So if you're singing This Is Amazing Grace or the original Amazing Grace, you could read from John 10, 18, you know, where Jesus says, no one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. And then when you're singing the chorus, you know, this is amazing grace that, you know, you would lay your life down for me. You know, you just heard the words of Jesus and now you're kind of singing them back. And I think that's a really powerful dichotomy. Another example of this would be uh, Who You Say I Am, the big one at a Hillsong right now, John 8, uh, you know, is where that verse comes from. You know, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, earlier in that chapter, there's the very memorable passage from Scripture where there's the, you know, the, the, the woman at the well who's being accused of, of prostitution, and Jesus comes in and says, go sin no more. But before he says that, he says, you know, where are your accusers? And I feel like a lot of us walk into worship, maybe we're feeling the burdens of the week. We feel like we're not good enough. We haven't lived up to this person, that person. We haven't lived up to our own expectations of ourselves. And just to say that before, look, no matter what you've done, you know, Jesus is saying to you today, where are your accusers? And they're not here. And we're welcoming you to worship. And then when you say that, maybe you can sing that with more authenticity. You can sing it with truth. Like, Lord, you, I am who you say I am. I believe that now in a greater way. Love it. At the end of the day, I always think when it comes to talking at worship, less is more. Yep. Don't feel like you have to put in something every single time. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. I usually identify um, like one or two spots in the service and that's it. There, I could say more. There's lots of things that could be said, but in the end, you know, we're not preachers as worship leaders. Uh, we just, we're, we're guides for the congregation through that worship uh, experience through song. Well, the featured resource we wanted to highlight on this episode of Pro Church Tools is the Church Front Channel that Jake has started. It is one of my favorite YouTube channels. If you are not subscribed to Churchfront, 
just unsubscribe from me because that's how amazing he is. You got to subscribe. If you have anything to do with worship, with production at your church, Jake is the killer. He's leading the way for the rest of us. So go subscribe, and that'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Tools. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it to the end, you're the best. At this point, what else is there left to do but subscribe? Well, after you subscribe, there is more to do, and that's like the video. Like the video. See you next time.